just having a feel for the pulse to make sure the pulse is good. Now I'm just looking at the at the artery in the groin, the common femoral artery, which is this pulsating blob here. There's a little bit of calcium on the on its sort of medial side. And as I'm coming down, I'm looking for the bifurcation with the splitting into the profunda, which is this one here, and, and the SFA, which has a bit of calcium on its anterior side. And ideally the puncture side should be on top of the femoral head, which is basically this bright structure just here. And if I go towards the pelvis, the artery should dip in the pelvis. We should start seeing the artery dipping down into the pelvis, which is there. Okay. So ideally you puncture at the highest side over the femoral head. There'll be a sharp scratch coming in just now. Sharp scratch, sorry, 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 sorry. Just giving you some more anesthetic there. So that's the anesthetic going right down to the anterior wall of the common femoral artery. It's good. Yeah, just uh, seeing the separation of the artery and the tissues there. They shouldn't be sharp. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. You sure? Yeah. Are we happy with the wire, Amanda? It's just your right hand. So it's flattening the needle down slightly. Advancing the wire very gently with two fingers and any resistance we're just going to stop and check but it's gone looks like it's gone very nicely. Yeah it's just flying down so let's have a look at the puncture side please. Fine that looks good uh, punctures on the femoral head. The wire seems to be flying down which is in the direction of the SFA so we'll just move this a little bit lower down. So I'm just going down with the J wire and I just want to I'm just looking at the tip of the J to see if it deforms at all, showing us there is some sort of narrowing or occlusion. And at the moment it's not. Can we go further down, please? Yeah. And I think here we're reaching a point where the J is not advancing freely. And that's, we're expecting that because that's where we think there might be an occlusion. So shall we, do we have the sheath? Yeah. Right, let's sheath it. So we've got a five French sheath in this case. We're removing the needle, the selding needle, and we're advancing the sheath now. You will feel a warm sensation going down the leg now, okay? Okay. Don't be alarmed, it's just the contrast going down the leg. Okay. So that part of the SFA looks very good, doesn't it? Yeah. Diffusely diseased, but no focal, focal significant narrowing. stenosis there. Okay, so less. The problem's going to be lower down than that, isn't it? Yeah, as expected from the ultrasound. Okay, can we overlap, please? Can we go south? So, what we can see is basically an occlusion and it looks about five centimeter occlusion of the popliteal artery really um, just after the adductor hiatus which is exactly what we thought it would be um, exactly so how are you thinking you might you might cross this so we'll need to use an angle catheter to direct the wire and we can probably poke at it very gently with using the back end of a j so a straight uh, wire or even a, a benson so, so you, may, you may actually manage this with a straight wire and yeah. a straight catheter or the angioplasty balloon without using an angle catheter or that at all. as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I will do the completion imaging just to make sure we, we, we have the TBO that is just now in place. Exactly, we need to see what the runoff's like. Uh, There is something, but it fizzles out. It's very hard to see, to be honest. 
there's the anterior tibial. Have you it's, run out of images? Yeah. Shall we un shall we automate to the run that we had? Yeah, number three, please. Thank you. And can we get some heparing as well on the table? So how much heparin are you giving? Well, I think in this case we'll just give 3,000 units. Okay. And, uh, and see how we get on. So we're putting the bang on the heparin to make sure it's heparin and then we're just gonna flush the sheath. Sorry, Lottie, you're right. Great. So we could have a vector two. And just waiting there wire removing any clots and we can have the vector two on please thank you since i got it here shall we try with the vector two and the yeah, straight end before we exchange i mean it's likely not going to work but we can maybe give it a wee try and see Sometimes so that's the vector two and the straight wire still and the straight yeah, wire just try that it might just be two redirect it a little bit and see if that crosses through that narrowing and there is definitely resistance here if you're making progress i carry on sometimes come a little bit further back there, that's a new, that's a different, that, that feels that's very gone different. more easily now, has and, it? And it feels different, completely that different. That promising. I'll take your cafter down to that point. Yeah. That looks very good. It looks more promising, yeah. Uh, so I think you're probably still intraluminal. Probably, yeah, it feels like it. It's definitely tight. I wonder if I'm at the point where I'm about to sort of re-entry. And you could fade on there and see where your real lumen is coming back it in. It does feel, I mean, I'm in a vest. That's, that's good, you're it back in the lumen. It does feel, I mean, back in the lumen there, yeah. It did feel I was about to jump into it there. So shall we, shall we put a little bit of contrast in here just to make sure? Yeah, let's we're, check your position. We're out and we should see blood coming back and we do see blood coming back. That's usually a good sign. That means you were luminal and we're just injecting a little bit confirming Perfect. we're definitely luminal so we'll now use again the j-wire is your j-wire long enough to exchange it's probably not probably not shall we use so a to use? benson or something how long 180 benson and 180 benson. and uh yeah can we get on my 180 benson 180. please so I'm just placing the wire, which has a very floppy tip, round about the distal popliteal level. I don't really want to go into the tibials at all, if, if possible, avoid it. But the wire tip should be distal to the occlusion. Okay, catheter out and balloon on, please. So this is a six millimeter balloon by, what does it say what it is, Alice? 660. So six millimeters by 60 millimeters. So again, we can see the wire at the end of the balloon and we hold the wire in place whilst we advance the balloon. I start screening at the point that I feel I'm getting close. I'm looking at the tip of the wire and I don't want it to move at all. And at this point, can we possibly fade in on this image or have we lost our reference? They moved. Um, I think you can see with your bony landmarks exactly where you need to yeah. be, can't you? Yeah, I think maybe on top of the patella, somewhere a bit, maybe lower down here or something. 
and you can sort of see the cortex of the bone, the vessel is still patent. So if we go round about here, yeah, and so we should also see some like... Um, I would take it a centimeter further in and then mm -hmm. you're going to get some overlap with your next balloon inflation as you come back up. Okay. So about there, I'd inflate there. And just inflate it until the wasting disappears. The pressure is irrelevant. Right, so you, you might feel a bit of a uh, pain maybe on the leg, okay? Mm. It shouldn't be more than two or three out of ten. If it is, you let us know. Right. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. So stretchy feeling coming just now. Can we save that, please? So we can see the narrowing now and the wasting, sorry, the balloon. That looks good. So I would, I would deflate now and go to your next position up. Okay, so we'll move more proximal. So I'm just moving the balloon a bit further back. So take it up about another three or four centimeters. And it, yeah, and reinflate there. So I'm just reinflating. Again, there's a little bit of narrowing there. Okay, so there are conflicting opinions as to how long you leave balloons inflated for, but generally we know that short balloon inflations initially don't look as good, but if you repeat angiography on these patients after about six weeks, the vessel's remodeled. So only go for long, prolonged inflations when the initial results uh, hasn't resulted in improved flow. If the flow looks good, uh, then that's usually sufficient. So let's deflate the balloon, leave the wire in, take the balloon out and we'll do a run and see what it looks like. So the balloon completely deflated and by holding the wire in place, we're pulling back on the balloon. You don't really need to screen for this. As the balloon is coming out of the sheath, it's catching on the sheath valve, so there's a bit of resistance. So I'm just holding the sheath as I pull this back. So, and we can keep the balloon on just in case. Okay, I think the flow looks excellent now. Yeah, it looks much better. So we better. need to check the runoff, check we've got no dislembolization. Yeah, it looks much better. And one more Amanda. That looks good. Okay, the vessels are clearly not continuous, but the anterior tibial looks very good. Yeah. And we've got refilling via collaterals of the other vessels, so I think yeah. that's a good result. So it really is a single vessel down to the foot, which also occludes as well. But only ATA go down, goes down and it occludes as well. This yeah, delay, so. but the flow will be significantly improved now you've yeah. done that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's us. And now we'll try and close the vessel and close the hole that we made. And I, what are you going to use for a closure device? We were using, in this case, Star Close, which, is a, which deploys basically a little clip outside, outside the vessel. Uh, there was a little bit of calcium on the vessel wall, so I don't want to use any devices that leaves a clip inside in case it catches. So, so we'll use a device which deploys the star outside. Okay, can we have the table as low as it goes, please? We'll flush the sheath. And, uh, and yeah, finish the x-ray, thanks, all right.